guys, thanks for tuning in to West Virginia Astronomy. My name is Jonathan, and in last week's video, I told you I was going to be comparing uh, one of my images to an image captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. Well, tonight is the night, and the target that I've chosen to shoot is the Helix Nebula. So it's a big, bright planetary nebula. I uh, should be able to capture a lot of that hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 using the Optolong LX Stream Duo Narrowband filter. So I'm using the William Optic Xenostar 81 and my ASI 183 MC Pro and I'll be controlling everything with the ASI Air Pro. It's all riding on the EQ6R Pro mount so hopefully we'll be able to get a pretty strong signal and see how much of a difference uh, a giant telescope in space makes against a backyard refractor telescope like this. So it's been a wet couple weeks and cloudy and just overcast. I haven't been out in a solid three weeks and it feels good. So be able to get at least the first half of the night on this target. Um, I should be able to get pretty close with my setup here. It has a two times crop factor and the telescope with the focal reducer is about 450 millimeters. It should get me pretty close. We are dealing with a crescent moon tonight as you can see behind me but I'm going to be using a duo narrowband filter, the Optolong L-Extreme filter. So I should be able to really resolve a lot of that hydrogen alpha and that oxygen inside of this nebula. So stick around guys, it's going to be a fun night of astrophotography in the backyard and I'll try not to disappoint. The Helix Nebula, also known as NGC 7293 or Caldwell 63, is a planetary nebula located in the constellation Aquarius. It was discovered by Carl Ludwig Harding uh, around 1824. This object is one of the closest to Earth of all the bright planetary nebula. Uh, here's an image captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, and you can see we have a lot of hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 um, right in the center here. And there's a lot of gold here that I really kind of want to pick up. So hopefully we can get a pretty strong signal and we can give the Hubble Space Telescope a run for its money. Ten second exposure you can see the nebula right here in the middle of the frame so we're gonna go ahead and turn our auto guiding on okay the moon is pretty bright we're going to hit okay I'm gonna wait for this to settle down just for a minute and then we'll start our exposures all right guys here we are going 300 second exposures and here is the result and it doesn't look like a whole lot here but i'm telling you guys once you stack up a bunch of these that's going to be a really strong signal you can see all the uh, hydrogen alpha around the edges and you can see the greenish teal color in the middle i'm excited it looks like a giant eye the eye of the universe <laughs> hopefully we can shoot this most of the night and i got it set on 60 exposures now we'll see how we do with that and we'll uh, come back and look at this thing all stacked up and see how it looks okay guys here we are on the computer um we're in astro pixel processor here and uh this is the finished stacked image from our session we have uh, I gathered a total of 6,300 second exposures, um, but this is, uh, I was able to keep about 95% of those, so this is about 55 images stacked together with darks, flats, and dark flats. So this is a regular RGB stack. Um, 
using the L Extreme filter. It is missing the Sulfur 2 data, but it does a pretty good job. Um, the only thing we're really missing here is like the, our star colors. This filter isolates the, um, the hydrogen and the sulfur gas. So I have this version and we have an auto saturation done and an auto stretch done to it just to see what we got. And you can see we ended up with a really strong signal here. If you zoom in, uh, this, this color noise here is from oversaturating the image, but I just wanted you guys to see really what colors were in here. This image hasn't been processed or anything yet. Um, here's the Hubble image around the same field of view we have here. So uh, let's see if we can rotate this. Yeah, there we go. That's just closer to what we got here. Okay, and you can see in the Hubble image, um, when you zoom in, you can see these little flakes that's gold, uh, just kind of a big cloud of gold gas in space. All of the elements from planet Earth came from a, a star exploding and releasing elements like this out in the space. And then they condense together and they form planets. And that's where our raw elements on planet Earth come from it is an exploding star. So it's pretty interesting stuff. It's pretty cool to see that gold gas kind of displayed here and I'm thinking I can probably you can see some of it here if we do a Hubble palette see this is done in the Hubble palette where it's blue and yellow gas and this is red and green so I actually did do a Hubble stack too so here is this one now we got our Hubble palette here so let's open up the picture again and you can see if we take both of these images the Hubble palette and the RGB that we had up here just a second ago and we combine those together in a very subtle way we can kind of get something close to this um, maybe not quite so detailed as this but I just kind of really wanted to show you how close you can get to an actual Hubble image from your backyard so we're gonna look at just the hydrogen alpha now Astro Pixel Processor allows you, if you use a duo narrowband filter like I did, you can do a hydrogen alpha extract and an oxygen 3 extract and you can separate those and then process them separately and bring them back together to create the Hubble image that we just looked at. So we got a pretty strong signal here in hydrogen alpha. Here is just the oxygen 3 and you can see there's very different details highlighted here with the oxygen 3 and with for our S2 data we just combined the O3 and the HA together and use that as a luminance layer for our S2 channel and this is what I came up with right here for our S2 so combining all three of those together creates this image here combining that S2 and the HA and the O3 we get this image so I'm gonna take all of these into Photoshop and process them up and I will show you the finished result here compared next to our Hubble image here okay guys here it is here's our finished processed image of the helix nebula on the right and we have our Hubble image on the left so you can see um, I'll probably go back and reprocess this again but I just wanted to show I mean it's a lot fuzzier in this one and that's to be expected because of the atmosphere is you're shooting through a lot of atmospheric uh, distortion here when you're in space you don't have all that so you're able to resolve the detail a lot better so but in my opinion, from a backyard refractor telescope that's one hundredth of the size of the Hubble telescope, I mean, that really isn't bad. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, I, I think it gives it a pretty good run for its money. You can see I actually brought forth some of this gas a little better than the Hubble did, um, but there's more definition and overall clarity in the Hubble image but not bad for a first try on this target and I just wanted to really share that you can take images like these from your backyard uh, you don't need a giant telescope you can uh, still have 
very pleasing results and what do you think of this uh, color palette here do you like the blue and the yellow gas better or the green and the red gas um, leave a comment down below let me know what you think and if you like this video and you like to see videos like this uh, maybe consider subscribing to the channel and leaving me a comment below um, leave me a thumbs up and yeah it really helps push these videos out and if you're new to the channel i do videos all about astrophotography from my backyard image processing tutorials anything to do with astrophotography so hit that like button guys subscribe to the channel and as always good luck clear skies and i'll see you in the next one